Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks to our friends at Artoria, we got a special guest mixer on the channel for you today. This is Ryan Earnhardt, who actually has one of my other favorite music and audio production channels right here on YouTube. You gotta check him out, creativesoundlab.tv. And Ryan is gonna be doing an entire mix using nothing but Artoria's FX2 bundle. It's a really interesting effects bundle that has a whole bunch of super vibey, extremely analog sounding compressors, EQs, reverbs, choruses, and other effects from some masters emulating the sound of analog gear. Really excited to check this one out along with you. Let's dive right into it. Ryan, take it away. Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, I'm hanging out today at Sonic Scoop. We're checking out the Effects Collection 2 by Arturia. We not only have compressors, EQ, we also have effects and even some guitar-based effects as well. So I'd like to do three things in this video. I wanna point out some of my favorites of the collection, then point out some unique things that I found very unique to these plugins. And then also uh, follow it up by checking out the Bus Force, which is fantastic on Stereo Bus. It's a really capable plugin because of its parallel processing. So let's get started. Okay, so pulled up in the DAW today is Hustle Souls with a song called Hollow. You know, in general, I think that the better the plugins, the faster you can learn them. I found this to be the case with these plugins. Uh, one of my favorites is the FET76 plugin. I wrote you this letter. Wow. I hope you don't find it out. I wrote you this letter. Wow. I hope, I hope you don't find it out. We can also follow up this vocal with a mono instance of the Comp Dodd 609. This is kind of a clean compression option to follow up the more colored option of the Comp Fet 76. Wow. I hope you don't find it hollow. Wow. I hope you don't find it hollow. My next highlight is the EQ Citral 295. And this to me is such a character piece, and it's just so nice on the low-end boost for kick drum, a high-end boost for vocals. It does have a ton of flavor built into it, and if it turns out to be too aggressive, we actually can turn down the range, effectively allowing these knobs to have a much finer adjustment because of this range feature. Let's have a listen to this on kick. It's a really nice full low end that isn't boxy at all, and I've really enjoyed it on kick drum. Of course, we also have the uh, the high and low pass filter here, which makes it super handy as a nice utility tool. Next up is the Reverb Plate 140. Uh, this has just been a joy to use. I really haven't found an instance where it sounds bad. Let's hear it on vocal. What we both know. A delicate dying, so she never quite says what we both know. A delicate dying, so she never quite says what we both know. A delicate dying, so she never what we both know. So, what are some unique features that I found? And I did a lot of testing. I've done a whole mix using these plugins. And I think what really stands out is a lot of the hidden features in the advanced panel. Let's take vocal, for example, with the CompFet 76. And tucked under the advanced panel here, we have a compression range. Why this is so cool is not only does it give you more control over how much is being compressed, but it also affects how the output 
is saturating. You can actually use this part as a compressor and part as a saturation effect. I wrote you this letter. Well, I, hope, I hope you don't find it hollow. I wrote you this letter. I wrote you this letter. I wrote you this letter. So depending on how much saturation I like, I can feather this. And I'm using this as kind of a dual purpose tool. I'm using compression to compress it and control it before it goes to my bus compressor on the vocal bus. But I'm also using it and kind of using this compression range to dial in and out how much saturation I would like. And moving on with these advanced features, uh, we have the time warp and the detection mode. Uh, you know, I've never seen this on a 76 style compressor. This is just really, really cool. We have the ability to change how the uh, detector is picking up uh, the sound and how it reacts. We also have a time warp that, uh, this is just a huge swing as far as the difference in uh, the attack and release times. Very, very helpful for uh, things like drums, uh, things like the sibilance of vocals. And finally, something just as simple as a really well-designed sidechain filter. We can dial in the, uh, you know, the harsh frequencies, give it a little bit of boost about, you know, five, six dB, and the compressor naturally avoids the harsh frequencies for us. If the guitars get a little too harsh, the compressor will be just a touch more reactive for us. We can also do this on vocals, just setting this to about five or six K and giving it a little boost there. And it's kind of like a part vocal compressor, part deesser, all in one plugin. So super, super capable compressor here. The Comp Diode 609 also has Look Ahead, which is very interesting because not only do we have the ability to adjust the attack time on a 33609 style compressor, which is really unique, but we also could make it look ahead. So we essentially could get just unbelievable, you know, instantaneous attack times. Now, this is kind of an all-time favorite for drum overhead for me. This is just been a nice, clean compressor that uh, is able to retain the transients of things like snare, but in, in a very gentle way, release the cymbals. And so I have it working for me today on overheads. Let's check it out. something about the way it treats those cymbals. It gives sustain, and it also gives a little attack to those drums. And I actually have it in MS mode here. So what I didn't tell you at first is that I actually was using this as a slight stereo widener. We can actually take off the step controls, and it gives us fine control over how wide our drum overheads are. Yeah, so it's just a way to sneak in a little extra wideness. Another unique feature is the Chorus Dimension D. Under the advanced panel, it has uh, some really cool oscillator shapes. Uh, you know, we don't have to just do the default. We can uh, do more random ones or a different shape. But what's really cool about this is the spread because this is a, a fairly potent effect. And I had a, an issue with it being very obvious at first on my background vocals. But I was able to dial in with this uh, advanced uh, uh, panel here. I was able to kind of take down some of the stereo width and also take down some of the wet dry mix. And it really helped it sit in the mix. Call my name. The birds in my ears still sing. And no it's not the same. That's cause everything breathing is changed. When you call my name, the birds in my ears still sing. And 
Yeah, so it adds the complexity without sticking out, and it just helps it to really blend into the mix. Of course, we have to mention the tube stay. This is a classic compressor, great for vocal and bass. But what's really nice about it is that we have uh, the ability to really shape how it interacts with our signal. And it's great for adding uh, just very large amounts of compression that you don't really hear so much. But what's cool is that this gain setting sounds different than gain settings up here, for example. So we can hear that overdrive kicking in there. It's about 500 hertz, kind of like a, the sound of a speaker uh, vibrating pretty good. Um, I don't know if that's a second or third harmonic, but that's the kind of thing that really goes a long way in helping the bass translate into a mix. Now one unique plugin is the reverb intensity. It's not just a reverb, although it can do that very well, but I think it's designed as a sort of evolving reverb. So it's really cool to create and kind of match up with various synthesizers. But in this case, I'm using its evolving quality to kind of have a kind of a haunting uh, repeat on the vocal line, especially when we have the space to do so in this very sparse first verse. A delicate day, so she never quite says what we both know. Man, that is amazing. It's almost like a Radiohead type effect where the reverb is really doing its own thing. Really, really special sounds out of that plugin. A little bit about my stereo bus chain. We have a uh, diode 609. We have a preamp V76, and we have the bus force. So I'll take each of these off and kind of show you how they affect the entire mix. Yeah, amazing what that did. I wasn't expecting quite that much. It just creates this feeling of loudness. Um, it's going to tighten up the transients a little bit. Looks like I have it on the fixed attack, which is kind of my standard uh, for drum overheads, stereo bus. It's going to kind of give us some tight transients. Of course, I have a fast release, medium low ratio here, be 1.5 to 1. And I'm just barely trying to do uh, some work with this, but it's adding that feeling of loudness. Next up we have the Pre V76. It's doing three things. It's adding saturation with the input gain. It's taking out the lows and the sides because I have it in mid side mode. And then because of that, we're actually adding some gain to the sides. So I'm using it as a stereo widener. So there, that's right at the brink. I mean, we're just kind of losing all the transients. And so obviously it is doing something. It's really cool how smooth it is. I mean, it's hard to hear until you really go up high. So we know it's doing something and it can be very, very subtle and very tasteful. Next, just a quick demonstration of the stereo widening.
you know? I can add all that high end, 8 dB of high end to the sides, and it really doesn't sound bad. There's a lot going on here, and this is definitely a fun uh, tone box to play with. So finally, we have the bus force. And this seems confusing at first, but it's really not once you get into it. So we have a basic uh, flow of the signal. We have an EQ, then it splits, and we have parallel processing. Here's our EQ. We have just a little bit of a, a low-end reduction. Also a little bit of low-end reduction at 200 hertz. So we're just lightening the load. We're basically creating a bass light mix. So that's dry, but with the equalizer. And you'll notice that it kind of sounds a little more plain already. That's because I have a couple different layers going on here. Uh, so the first layer is the compressor. This compressor can be very aggressive. Uh, it can go actually um, way beyond <laughs> the typical ratios, beyond infinity. But I'm using it in a more subtle way. So the way that I've done this is mute the dry and just deal with the compressed and see what you get. found that the best indicator of the compression is this line here. I don't see a whole lot of the meters moving, and I'm really doing some subtle compression anyhow. But what I'm going to do is set this um, pretty much how I like it, but slightly aggressive on the compression. Just a little bit. Still musical, but a little aggressive. Then I'm going to take it down about uh, 6 dB or so and mix it in with the dry. And that'll also be about 6 dB down. Hopefully we can land with about a 50-50 mix, about halfway dry and halfway compressed. Besides just layering dry with compression, I decided to try to add some saturation to just the low end. So I set the filter to be a part of the saturation path. And then what I did is I did a really aggressive low pass. I'll go ahead and mute everything else but that. I didn't want to completely obliterate the low end here. I'm just trying to add some complexity to that low end. We can really hear um, the difference there. You know, I can really overdrive it. That's pretty aggressive. And I mean, it works. I mean, it works. You wouldn't think it does, but um, it sounds great mixed underneath. So it's been a blast to check out the Effects Collection 2 by Artoria. And if you have any questions, I'll be hanging out in the comments below. Really enjoyed making this video. It's got just a ton of flavor in these plugins. So talk to you soon.